Come in. Mr. Collins, the operator will have your New York connection in just a few minutes, sir. Oh, thanks. Esteban. Simon. It's Silvio. Silvio! 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 Hey, Silvio, what do you think you're doing? I want to see the fishes. Oh, you want to see the fishes? Well, let's go see your pop. Silvio! Where do I collect the rewards? Oh, Mr. Collins, what would we do without you? Senor Collins, you have killed your attorney? Yes, he's meeting us at the dock. Excuse uh, tell me, is there plenty of fresh milk in the United States? Well, my acquaintance with the milk situation dates back over 30 years, but I'm sure things haven't changed much. <laughs> Excuse me, I must answer the phone. Senor Collins, huh? uh, Mama will need the help of an American woman. Oh, yes, sure. My attorney's secretary will take care of Mrs. Diestro and the children while you and he talk over my proposition. Senor <laughs> Collins, are we there any games? Can we find a straw later? Oh, 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 <laughs> One might think you're the children of a peasant, not those of a banker contemplating a million dollar loan to Senor Collins. Oh, thank you, Senor. Ah, I said contemplating. <laughs> After all, I'm here strictly on a vacation. Where's Silvio? Silvio! 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 Be just a few minutes, Mr. Collins. They're trying to locate your party now. Good. Gentlemen, I want 200,000 reprints of this article. But that'll cost $10,000. Practical solution to marriage problem, based on statistical information. We're not running an advice to the Lovelorn Bureau, but an insurance company. Mr. Daniels, I refuse to vote this money. We've had several hundred thousand dollars worth of insurance canceled out because of divorce. And according to my statistics, most of the divorces, at least among our insured, were because there was no practical plan for marriage. Is that what the statistical department wastes its time on? Control your temper, Braille. You appropriate 15,000 a year for the prevention of cancer. The common cold gets 20,000. We spend money sending our people to the dentist twice a year, but we do nothing to prevent divorce. Just one for you. Yes. Good morning, madam. This is Gallup Poll. Do you honestly believe that life is just a bowl of cherries? I'll uh, meet you with the information when your boat docks. Now listen, darling, this is my 18th call since leaving South America. For the 18th time, will you please tell me that you love me? Well, whatever information I have is confidential. I'll give it to you in person. Well, listen, I'm going to stay right here on this phone till you say it. At a dollar a minute, I can hold on for several days. Uh, I'm a very busy woman. Busy? Well, how long do you think it takes to say it? Wait a minute, I'll time it. I love you. Two seconds flat. And even if you say it slowly, with feeling like this, I love you. That's only three seconds. <laughs> if Marconi here weren't leering at me, I'd tell you I love you. Wait a minute. Hmm, he's very good looking. Very good looking. He's beautiful. Of course, he didn't have much competition there. Hello, Anne. Hello, Miss Hooper. Hello. Oh. Sorry about your divorce. Well, we lasted a lot longer than some of them. Ruthie, I'm sorry I can't get out of court with you. I've got to meet Tice. We'll be there later. Oh, don't bother. It's not a very pleasant show for a prospective bride and groom. Oh, now, 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 now. Come on. Let's save the tears for the judge, shall we? Hmm? I'm all right. I'm just weeping for the noble institution of marriage. It's a mess. But I suppose there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure about that. 
the reason you and Tom are splitting up is simply because... It's because he's a dirty, rotten old... No, 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 no. We better skip the details. Like thousands of others, you fell in love, held hands, closed your eyes and took the jump. Yes. And it wasn't a three-point landing. That's because you didn't know each other. You got yourselves all tangled up emotionally before you knew whether or not you were compatible. Oh, this desk is a mess. Ruthie. Mother divorced Dad when you were eight and I was six. We shuttled from one to the other. Our affections torn between the two. Your boy is going to go through the same thing. When I have children, and I hope to have a great many, I'm going to make sure their father is permanent, not part-time. Well, just being engaged won't prove you're compatible. You never get to know a man until you've lived with him. That's my plan exactly. Oh, now, darling, you're not going oh, to... Oh, we're going to be married. But for the first three months in name only, we're going to keep emotion out of it. If we find after that time we can make a go of it, well, we'll uh, carry on from there. Uh, look, did Tice agree to that? I haven't told him yet. Oh, well, that's just a small detail. I'm sure he'll see it my way. Tice is very intelligent. And intelligent people are never afraid of new ideas. Anyway, someone has to do the pioneering. Well, of course, I don't know, Tice. He may be a new breed of man, but I'll bet he'd rather marry in the usual way than be another Daniel Boone. Well, I'll see you in court. Vote. Got a little gift for you. Not a wedding present, but a sort of pre-wedding present. Should the career woman retire because of marriage? <laughs> I wasn't thinking of retiring. Good, then you won't need this. Oh. Which one is he? The one with the boots on. I don't see why you had to go all the way to South America to get him. There are fellas outside tearing up the street who look exactly like this. And they've got higher boots. As a matter of fact, if you promise to fall in love with me, I'll put a pair on myself. Sorry. You should have thought of that before I discovered South America. Wish me luck. <laughs> Attorney? Hello. Uh, Charlotte, do you think if I went up to Gangplank and came down, you could sort of get into the spirit of the thing? Now, when you hired me as your secretary, you told me there was no manual labor involved. When I hired you, I was a newlywed. Darling, uh, is that the kind of a kiss to use right out here on Pier 87? It is when you've been waiting six months for it. Next time he comes up for air, ask him where we can find the Diestros. Excuse me. I'm Mr. Bertram's secretary. If you could tell me where we can find the South American banker, we'll leave you two kids alone. Julia! Just follow that call. Julia! Oh, darling, all this time I've been sitting out in that jungle trying to remember how beautiful you are. Julia! What are you sitting up there for? Come on, let's get married. <laughs> Can't you wait until 12? My sister's being divorced this morning. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I told her we'd go down and hold her hand, all right? All right. Hello, Harry! Oh, oh, yeah. When'd you get here? Uh -huh. Where's your wife? Where's Flores? Gee, you look well. You look splendid. Oh, you just say that to be nice. Darling, this is Harry Bertrand, my attorney. Harry, this is Donnie. Hello. Oh, dear, you're a little late. Hello, Harry. You two know each other? You wrote and told me to look her up. Charlotte's taking care of Mrs. Diestro and the children. Say, are all those kids his? Well, in his own modest way, Diestro's a remarkable fellow. Oh, we're taking him down to the office with us. We'll get a general deal worked out. No, no, no. We're going down to the divorce courts. Huh? It's my sister. Oh. And then we're going to get married. Here, wait a minute. Here are my checks. Checks. Here are my keys. Yeah, I got them. Here's your dog, sir. And here's my dog. All right, Bert, dog. Congratulate us quickly. We're in a hurry. Congratulations. I hope you'll be very happy together. <laughs> Say, what about me and Diestro? I hope you'll be very happy together. Oh, thank you very much. Huh? <laughs> Uh, Bruce didn't say anything. So I says to him, I'm tired of standing over a hot stove all day long. 
So he says to me, if you're so blamed tired, then sit on it and give your feet a rest. <laughs> the same size clothes he did. Now, Your Honor, that's nothing for my husband to go screaming about. After all, you can't wear two suits at once. <laughs> you got a brother about my size? No. <laughs> because he's a ditty, rotten, no good. Here story. we are. Your personal opinion of the defendant is of no interest to the court. Well, I'm sorry, but I was merely trying to convey the fact that he never came home night. Why, that's a deliberate lie. If the defendant persists in these outbursts, he will be ordered from the courtroom. Now, Mrs. Howland, when you first married your husband, you knew that he was a physician. Yes. We can't let this happen to us. Mm. Mm. Subject to call at any hour of night. We'll have to guard against it in some way, won't we? Mm. People shouldn't just rush blindly into marriage, do you think? No. Your Honor, my husband is a psychiatrist. All of his patients are crazy. He spends most of his time trying to keep nuts from making faces at each other. He began to handle me with the same methods. He That's a lie! Maybe if I had, we wouldn't have come to this. This is my final warning. One more outburst and you will leave the court. So far this year, I've tried 152 divorce cases. Like yours, they all started with incompatibility. You do agree it that if a plan would make a successful a marriage, you should have a plan. Mm -hmm. Sure. Even if it's a radical idea, intelligent people shouldn't oppose it. Mm. Even if it's a, a radical idea? Even if it's a radical idea. Both parties should certainly be interested enough to plan their marriage so that... He's right, Tice. We should have a plan. Mm -hmm. I've got a plan. Oh, no. I've got one. Have you, darling? I've given it a lot of thought. Uh -huh. It may seem a bit startling to you at first. Oh, do you think so? Uh, I thought... Mm. Well, I thought that uh, for the first three months of our marriage, just three months, yeah. that uh, we... Uh, uh. What? And then you enjoyed a blissful honeymoon. What? You're crazy! I warned you, leave the court. But, Your Honor, I never... Leave the court. Divorce granted. That's the most fantastic thing I ever heard of. Now, Tice, I arrived in Rio Sunday night. I met you Monday night. We looked at the stars Tuesday, Wednesday. And Thursday. And I sailed Friday. All we know about each other is that we both like stars. And you must admit that's not a very sound basis for marriage. Please be reasonable, please, dear. Listen, I'm a conservative. My father voted the straight ticket. I voted the straight ticket. My father went straight from his wedding to Niagara Falls. What was good enough for my father is good enough for me. Are you Heffelfinger versus Heffelfinger? No. Do we look like Heffelfingers? No, but you sound like them. What exactly does Harry Bertram do for you? He's my lawyer. He handles my business. Mm. He looks a little shifty to me. Are you sure he's honest? Did you check on him? Well, of course I'm sure. I checked on him for a year before I hired him. You'd spend a year finding out about a business associate. And you think that four days is enough to find out about your wife. That's not very flattering. The present rate of exchange that would make your business 90 times more important than your marriage. Oh, it's an entirely different thing. No, it isn't. If we get married, I hope we're in business a lot longer than you and Harry. Listen, there's one thing you're not taking into consideration. I love you. I do not love Harry. He doesn't attract me in the slightest. Good evening, Mr. Collins. Mr. Bertrand is expecting you, sir. I'll let him know you're here. Before you do, fix me a drink, will you, please? Yes, sir. Man, you thought you could get away with it. Well, what a fool I've been. It's been going on right under my nose. Nothing's been going on under your nose, except your big mouth, and I wish you'd shut it. All right. Explain this. One black evening dress, $200. I didn't get it. But I'm sure that thing laughingly called your secretary did. $200 for that mess of mascara. 
and I haven't even a stitch to my back. I didn't buy her the dress. The company bought it for her. Miss Campbell saved us a lot of money on the Stevens deal. The dress was sort of a bonus. Come, come, Harry. You can think of a better one than that. It's the same thing as if I'd bought the office boy a new bicycle. You wouldn't holler about that, would you? The office boy doesn't go to Atlantic City with you. Miss Campbell wasn't there with me. You were there a week ago Sunday, and so was she. And so were 27,000 other women. I could hardly be making love to all of them. Or could I? I wouldn't put it past you, you chowderhead. Listen, I'm trying to tie my tie, so will you please shut that crocodile mouth of yours? Another crack like that, and I'll leave this house. I wish you were a man for about 15 seconds. I'd kick your teeth in. All right. You asked for it. Asked for what? Ask me to get out of the house. I did not. I just said I'd like to kick your teeth in. Mr. Collins is downstairs, sir. Tell him I'll be right down. I'll leave you so fast it'll make your hair stand on end. Where are you going? Back to the chorus. I suppose you think I couldn't. Florence, I wish you wouldn't leave. Oh, no. It's too late for apologies. Oh, I'm not apologizing, but every time you go, you come back in two weeks. And every time you come back, you bring your mother with you. And it takes me three months to get rid of her. Oh, Tice, glad you got here early. I had a talk with Diestro. I didn't have such good luck. Well, it couldn't have been any worse than mine. What's the matter? Have a fight with Ann? Not yet, but I see a pip coming on because I'm not going through with it. She can't expect me to. It's too silly. It's too asinine. Oh, I agree with you. There's only one little detail. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not getting married. Oh, it's wonderful. I travel 6,000 miles by foot, by dog cart, by jackass, by plane, by ship. I couldn't get here fast enough. And what do I find? A shoulder that would make dry ice feel like a, like a bed warmer. So she called it off? Who said so? Well, you just said, either you've had too much to drink or I haven't had enough. Oh, she wants to get married, but under certain conditions. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I read her article in the Insurance Monthly. Huh? A practical plan for marriage. Oh. I never thought you'd be the guinea pig. <laughs> well, will you please tell me what's so hilarious about it? Can't you see? This is one of those silly ideas the female hatches out now and then. One week they go in for art, the next week it's fortune telling, then they switch to crocheting their own snoods, and when they get tired of that, they take up the four-day banana diet. So I sit here and wait till she switches to the banana diet, huh? No, marry the girl under any condition she wants. Then you change your mind for her. Come here, take a look at yourself. Huh? Come on. All you've got to do is turn on the charm. And you've got plenty of it, Tice. Oh, I haven't got so much, Harry. Why, when you want to be, you're irresistible. Really? It'll work. Take my word for it. If there's one thing I know how to handle, it's women. Turn on the charm, huh? And she'll throw her idea right out the window. All you need is a glowing fire, her favorite flowers, soft lights. Uh, music. That's it. <laughs> I'd work at that. Downstairs, dear?
Mr. Arno. A messenger brought this from the office, sir. Practical solution to the marriage problem. Anne appropriated the 10,000. The idea is very sound with a three months probationary period, inconclusive. You make it a year, and I'll make it 100,000. In close, you'll find sample pamphlets, Gordon Daniels. <laughs> You're wasting your dough, Mr. Daniels. Touch you may pour me a drink. Mm. No, it's not cool enough yet. Just about three more minutes. Oh, I like this house, Tice. I don't think we could have done better if we'd built it ourselves. And I like the view of the lake from my bedroom window. But when I rented it, I knew there was something wrong with the house. There was no lady of the house. Now it's complete. Tice says charming and rates a kiss. I'm glad to see that our animals have taken to each other. Well, I had a hard, hard talk with them. Told them I'd stand for no nonsense, didn't I? Here we are. Comfortable? Mm -hmm. Sure? Very. I'd like to tell you something. Confidentially. Yes, dear. You won't spread it around? No, dear. I like you. I don't know why, but I do. That's very interesting. Please go on. I can't joke about it. It's too big, darling. Bigger than anything I've ever known. Gordon Daniels. Oh, Gordon. No, 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 no. You're not disturbing us. Oh, no, you're not disturbing us. Shh. Oh, but Gordon, I don't think we could give them that rate. No, not until they've installed the safety appliances. You'd better consult Genevieve. Yes, let's not forget Genevieve. No. No. Of course not. Good night. I'm terribly sorry, Tice. You'll have to get used to these interruptions. You see, you elected to marry a businesswoman. But, darling, I don't mind. You just make out a set of rules that you want me to follow. And all the things you don't want me to do as your husband. Except, of course, just loving you so much. Tice, I'm just beginning to really know you. You know, that Harry Bertrand may seem like a dull, stolid fellow, but he's really very shrewd. Very shrewd. Uh, I, I'm sure he is, dear, but... Uh, no buts about it. He's one of the smartest. A toast to Harry. Why to Harry, dear? Oh. Uh, well, <laughs> wasn't he our best man at the wedding? Carried it off in great style, too. Nobody like him. To Harry. All right, to Harry. Tice. Hmm? You're not sorry. Sorry? Why? Why, I'm delighted. We're, we're starting something big, something important. We're trailblazers. Sure, that's what we are. We're trailblazers. Not many men would be as understanding as you. There are a few men like me. Two men like you. Lit. 
be all, madame? It certainly will. We won't need you any more tonight, Arnold. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. Where did this come from? Hmm? Oh, that. I picked that up in Mexico. That's Quetzalcoatl, the Aztec god of plenty. It's supposed to ensure abundant crops and offspring. Oh, he will be nice to have around. Darling. I was looking at those tomatoes in the garden this afternoon. They're uh, doing badly. Tomatoes have got nothing on me. You know, it's a funny thing about champagne. I can drink quarts and quarts of it. It never affects me one way or another. Where have I heard that before? The day your boat sailed into Rio. Remember? Lovely. They were playing it on the pier. The first time we met. You'd lost your way. What I... makes you think I was lost? Why, Mrs. Collins. May I have this dance? Do you remember that night, Tice? I do, but do you? All lovers have a moon, but we didn't. We just had a big black sky sparkling with stars. It seemed like all the stars in the world were shining down on Rio that night. Getting a little warm in here. Second floor is probably much cooler. Catches the breeze from the lake. It's not uncomfortable. Do you know the night my boat sailed? I cried. I felt like a male Madame Butterfly myself. You were sweet. Terribly sweet. Don't you think it's warmer now? Hello. Oh, hello, hello, Genevieve. Genevieve Hopper? Huh. It's a conspiracy. What? Oh, yes. Certainly. Well, of course we can give them the rate. They've just put in those perfectly lovely safety belts. Oh, yes, dear, of course. I'm, I'm still here. A little champagne, darling? Cool you off? Well, Monday, dear. Darling, did you ask Arno to put out my pajamas? Anne! Well, let's discuss it first, shall we? By all means, let's discuss it now. Tell her to fly right over on her broomstick. Well, anything you say, Genevieve, just go right ahead and do it. Hello? Hello? <laughs> she was cut off. Oh, dear, right in the prime of her life. <laughs> right in the prime of her life. Absolutely. <laughs> hmm. Now that we're married, must be extravagant. Have the future to think of. Buy you a lovely gown with the money we can save in electricity in a year. Oh, Ty. Mm -hmm. To make the music a little softer, darling. Uh -huh. So nice here. So nice. Thank you for remembering, darling. Hmm? Oh, the gardenia. And 
Once a piece of mining machinery hit me over the head. That's just the way I feel now. That's the most beautiful speech. Darling, I've waited all my life for you. Darling, I didn't wait for you. I went out and found you. Good night, dear. Good night. You're irresistible. Mm -hmm. You've got charm. Sourpuss fraud. God of plenty. <laughs> you can make spinach grow in the Garden of Eden. Are you sneering at my predicament? Listen, I'll give you just three to wipe that superior cynical leer off your face. One. Two. You were due at the office two hours ago. Where have you been? You're fired. Okay, I'm fired. But listen, Diestra waited in my office all morning for you. Do you want the loan to go cold? Money, money, money. Is that all you lawyers ever think about? Charm. Ugh. I only charge you for my professional advice. Any other advice was given to you free as a friend. Friend? Go ahead, stab me in the back. Right between the shoulder blades. That's what you did to me, stab me right in the back. Listen to me, you Peruvian pixie. You spent five years up to your hips in mud, snakes, and jungle, and yet when we're that close to success, you throw everything out of the window. And what for? For love. Ever hear of it? Yes, before I was married. Tice, you can't go on like this. Please, go away, go away, leave me alone. Before you toss a million hard dollars away as though they were so many peppermint lozenges, do me a favor. If only to see me get my commission off the deal. Have the Diestros down here for the weekend. Be nice to them. Weekend? Yes. Oh, Harry, you're right. I have been letting you down. I've been letting myself down. I've been letting the Diestros down. Haven't I? Yes. I should settle down and attend a business, shouldn't I? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Arnold. Yes, sir? There'll be three extra guests for dinner. Senor Diestro, his wife, and Mr. Bertrand. And Charlotte, my secretary. And Miss Campbell. I'll have her bring out the contracts in case we get Diestro to agree. Hmm. Uh, the Diestros will stay for the weekend. Where shall I put them, sir? Oh, just put them in my room. Yes, sir. Harry, if there's one thing I like about my lawyer, it's persistence. Your lawyer, a minute ago, you fired me. Don't change the subject. Collins residence? I'm bringing four extra home for dinner, Arno. Miss Hooper, Mr. Daniels, my sister, and Mrs. Bertrand. Oh, please. We'll have cocktails around 6.30. All right, yes, that'll be fine. 
Oh, Ann, I wish you hadn't done that. First I barge into your office, and now I'm upsetting your dinner plan. Oh, don't be silly. Have a cigarette. No, thanks. You need cheering up. What's more, I'm going to seat you right next to my handsome boss. <laughs> you know, Ann, I think it's wonderful the way Tice feels about your continuing your work. <clears throat> Tice and I have a perfect understanding. So did Harry and I, until he started going to conventions in Atlantic City. Oh, a great many husbands go to conventions. Yes, but did they buy their secretaries $200 black evening dresses? $200. Made me wear 49.50s, and I had to pay for the alterations out of my pin money. If I ever run across what in polite society is referred to as his secretary, and she's wearing that gown, I'm going to tear it off her back. Um, 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 do, do, do. Oh, very pretty. Very pretty. You like it? Mm-hmm. I like everything and everybody tonight. <laughs> Be with you in a minute, Harry. Don't worry about me. Why all the extra plates? I ordered dinner for six. Mrs. Collins is bringing four guests, sir. Why didn't you tell me that when I talked to you? Mrs. Collins called after that, sir. Why didn't you tell her I was having guests? I assumed that you had discussed this with her, sir. Who's she bringing? Why don't you answer the door? I was going to answer you first, sir. Ah, senora. Senor, bienvenidos. Gracias, gracias. Nos complace mucho estar aquí. Es usted muy amable en invitarnos. No, de qué, senora? Uh, now then, which will it be first, your rooms or a cocktail? Oh, I would like um, to... A cocktail for me, please. Uh-huh, we'll compromise. <laughs> Harry will mix you anything you'd like. You come with me. Senor! So you got here all right. I was told I could find a drink in here. Yes, Miss Campbell's pouring Hello, this evening. Hello, Miss Diestro. How do you do? Just temptation, right at your elbow. That will do nicely. Did you have a chance to look at the plans? Oh, yes. Oh, what'd you think of them? Ah, Quetzalcoatl. I felt the same way. What'd you say? I just say Quetzalcoatl. Oh, of course. The Aztec god of plenty. <laughs> I have one in my home ever since I married. Well, he certainly didn't let you down, did he? <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about the loan? Yes and no. I must warn you, Mr. Bertrand. By Wall Street standards, I would be judged a little eccentric. Because I invest not only in the proposition, I invest in the man. It's been the one ambition of his life. Then why has he not kept the appointment? Why has he not seen me? Well, that was because... Uh... Because he has no incentive. He seems to have nothing to work for. Sit down, please. Let me tell you a little story. There once was a young man. He was married. He had talent, ideas. But they could wait till tomorrow. Today, he wanted to laugh and play and sleep in the sun. All of a sudden, there was a baby. A boy or a girl? A uh, uh, boy. Then something happened to the young man. He went to the office while the baby lay in the sun. <laughs> All of a sudden, poof! Number two. <laughs> Quite a man. Now there are shoes to buy and the young man work on Saturday. All of a sudden, poof! Number three. And four. And before he knows it, five, six, seven, eight. How incredible. I look around. I am the richest man in Peru. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you are the young fellow. <laughs> well, uh, I see what you mean. But... A family is the only real incentive for a man. Tice is going to have a family. Huh? You mean? Yes, yes. Didn't you know? Oh, that's wonderful. Oh. I'm so happy well, for uh, him. Are you? Well, I didn't know it mattered that much. I would sooner depend on a man with a baby than a baby bun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he'll have one if I have to have it for him. Julio dice que las americanas son muy lindas. Muchas tienen sangre. Congratulations, amigo mío. Congratulations. Good heavens, I didn't think you'd get things settled so quickly. También él va a tener un niño. Y quiero decir su esposa. Oh, le felicito, señor Collins. Usted sabe que yo tengo nueve. Ay, un bebé. Un bebé. Bebé. Vamos a beber a la salud del futuro, papá. Ojalá tenga nueve. <laughs> Granny, baby, what is all this? Well, it all began with a fellow who wanted to lie in the sun all day. Wanted to lie in the sun? What? If you'll excuse me, I think I'll go and get the contracts. It was this way. Diestro made a million with each offspring. 
Don't you think the Collinses are very nice people? Yes, they are. I believe you ought to let them have the money. Maybe. And poof, you became a father, and you'd better stay that way if we're going to get the loan. But Harry, how am I... Oh, that must be Anne now. The little mother. Here we are. Thank you. Uh, Senor Diestro, I wouldn't mention this to Mrs. Collins. She doesn't know about it yet. I mean, uh, she doesn't know you know about it yet. She's uh, trying to keep it a sort of secret for a while. But why? I do not understand. Uh, well, she... Well, I got you here safely. Good evening, Arno. My other guests will be right along. She has to keep it a secret from her boss, Mr. Daniels. You see, uh, he doesn't like children. So, please don't mention it. Oh, we will not say anything. Oh, Thank you. But any man who does not like children... Oh, wow. Well, Thank you very much. this is a surprise. And a very pleasant one. Her doctor believes in exercise. Hello, darling. Hello, dear. Well, 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 senora. How are you, senor? Mrs. Collins, I'm so happy. And you look so well. Thank you. Thank you. You look well, too. You must feel well to look so well. Oh, I feel great. How do you feel? Fine. Isn't it wonderful? Wonderful? Oh, you're being here. Yes, yes, that is wonderful. I believe you know everyone. Oh, yes, of course. We all met at the wedding. You remember uh -huh. Mr. Daniels? Yes, the boss. And what do you think the world would be like without children? Uh, can I get you another cocktail? Come on over here and I'll, I'll show you our vegetables. He vegetable. has so many. Oh, Anne, darling, I'm so sorry. I had a little trouble with my... If you'll excuse me, I have an appointment. In Atlantic City? Well, here we come. Oh. This is uh, Miss Campbell, Mrs. Bertrand. Hello. Well, it's every man for himself now. Oh, it's heist. May I talk to you for a moment? What's the matter? I'm getting out of here. We're separated, and that's the way I want to stay. Oh, no. You can walk out on your wife, but you can't walk out on me. If you don't mind, I'll say good night. Listen, what? you're just as much a father to this child as I am. If Diestro finds out we've lied to him, we're sunk. That's what I like about Peru. That's perfectly massive. You sit down, Mrs. Diaz. No, 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 oh, no, no, no. It's no, not heavy, thank you. Oh, does, does your doctor really believe in exercise? I imagine so. He rides in the park every morning. Uh, do sit down. Oh, you sit down. Oh, no, yes, well, you. That's quite right. I'm oh, the hostess. Oh, you're yes. the guest. Oh, thing. Right. Yes, and you should have your feet up, please. <laughs> should I? Mm -hmm. Why? You know, all women... Oh, darling, wouldn't you like a cocktail? Oh, I'd love you, one. You shouldn't drink now. No. 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 Oh, Tice, you know I'm dreadful at games. What's the answer? You tell me. Darling, Come look. On. There's Ruth. Come on, let's say hello to her. Hello, Ruth. Good old Ruth. Well, for heaven's sake, I didn't expect to see you here. Look at her. Doesn't she look well, darling? Say hello to Ruthie. Hello. Hello. <laughs> what are you saying, darling? I was just telling Mr. Diestro that we grow all our own vegetables here. Oh. Can you eat everything, Mrs. Collins? Yes, I... Papa, I didn't say anything, but when I had my... Oh, first... Mrs. Diestro, what do you think of Notre Dame's chances of playing in the Rose Bowl? Well, Charlotte, I'm so glad you brought that up. I think they've got a great chance. So, I'm sick of hearing people say they're in a slump. <laughs> so am I. I think it's downright defamation of character. <laughs> Darling, I don't think women are so interested in football. Oh, yes, yes, I am. If Notre Dame doesn't play in the Rose Bowl, I think I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely gown you are wearing, my dear. Yes, yes, isn't it? Of course, I can't afford it on my salary, but you'd laugh if you knew where it really came from. <laughs> Did you bring all your family with you from Peru? Oh, yes. We take them everywhere. Of course, some people might think it's silly, but we love our children. Well, I believe we all have children. <laughs> Do you? Uh, senor, did you notice on the blueprint my new plan for sluicing? Oh, he has a wonderful idea. Yes, we're all hopped up about it down at the office. Yeah. Sluicing, dear? Yes, darling. Sluicing is a term applied in uh, placer mining. 
where the gravel is carried to the head of the sluice by shoveling in wheelbarrows, by dragline excavators, or by small steam shovels. I'm afraid that's not much better, darling. Let's get back to football. Did you go to the fair, Mrs. Diestro? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Uh, how did you like the world of tomorrow? Oh, I am old-fashioned. I like the wonderful baby show. All of them in the little incubators. I like them, too. <laughs> you should. Uh, oh, senor, I've got the most wonderful surprise for you. You have? Mm -hmm. What is it? Yes, let us in on it. Well, you know on the blueprints for the new conveyors, we were using uh, 30 weight oil for the rollers. Well, I figured out a plan to do the same thing with a 20 weight oil. Darling, I'm so happy for you. <sighs> oh, I did not know that. You uh, didn't know what, Senora? That your wife is a writer. Oh, 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 she's not a professional writer. But in her spare time, she writes articles for the Insurance Monthly. You see, we statisticians pick up a great deal of information that should be passed on to other women. Well, it's a plan. A toast <laughs> to South America and to our very charming guest, Senora and Senor Diestro. Senor? 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 Thank you. <sighs> now, you were saying? Oh, yes, the article. It's based on a practical solution to the marriage problem. The beautiful Ooh. part of the plan is that it's being applied. A toast to the United States. And may our two great countries always remain as close in friendship as our glasses. Well, that was beautiful, Harry. You see, Mrs. Diestro, Ed has a little... A toast, uh, a toast to... Uh, to uh, to uh, both Americas. <sighs> Bravo. Well, Anne's theory is that love... Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties, Charlotte? Thanks. And thanks for the wonderful dinner. It was beautiful after a tiring day. <laughs> no wonder Miss Campbell's had a tiring day. There's a convention in town. This is a lovely home. Oh, uh, would you like to see the rest of it? There's a tour leaving immediately. Come along, Florence. Coming, Papa? That was one of the nicest dinners. I never had time to eat. Come on. Listen, in here we could control the conversation, but when they spread out in there, the well-known cat's going to be out of the well-known bag. We've got to get rid of Daniels and that Hooper Banshee. I'll get rid of them if I have to call in the exterminators. Uh, operator, this is 1482. Will you ring it, please? I think the bell's out of order. Thank you. Collins residence? Yes, sir. It's for you, Mr. Daniels. Oh, excuse me. For me? Thanks. Hello. Yes, Mr. Daniels speaking. Hello, Mr. Daniels. This is Chief O'Rafferty. Your office is on fire. Yes, well, wait a minute. What, what about my records? Save my records. What's that? Well, I don't know if we can or not. It looks now as if nothing's going to be saved. Look out, boys! You see, you better be coming down. That's it, boys. Use the big hose. Casey, put the ladder over there and get that woman off the roof. Uh, Hooper, tell Arnold to call a taxi right away, will you? Yeah. Uh, we'll be right down. And this Three more time. hoses here. Three more hoses. And we need a lot more pressure. More pressure. And we need a lot more pressure. More pressure! Better use the pump and three more hoses! Harry, it's a 
Enough! Water! Okay. We uh, were just trying to figure out the hydraulic pressure on the northeast shaft in case the mine ever got flooded. Yes, the pressure per square inch is practically the same. Right. And this is where the boys sail boats. Hooper and Mr. Daniels going? I don't know, madame. They said something about going to a fire. Fire? Funny they're dashing off like that. Isn't it, dear? Oh, it's the silliest thing I've heard of. Imagine chasing fire engines at their age. <laughs> they ever do anything like that before? No. Huh. Well, the brain's a delicate instrument. Sometimes it snaps just like that. Um, well, how about some bridge, folks? If you don't mind, I will play only a little while. I would like to retire early, if my room is ready. Of course. Oh, yes. Of course. Mm hmm? Are they expecting to stay for the weekend? Well, they practically invited themselves. We have two bedrooms. Where are they going to sleep? Oh, darling, what did I do? I had to give up my room. Oh, oh now, Anne, business comes first. We must think of the Linda Vista mine, not ourselves. We mustn't be selfish. I don't mind. I get frequent vacations. But you don't look rested, Miss Campbell. Maybe you work a little too hard. <laughs> I get paid for it. And handsomely. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Miss Campbell, a girl like you shouldn't be working around offices. Why don't you retire? Why? You keep this up and... You'll get old before your time. Why? Why, Mrs. Bertrand. <laughs> as long as I can wear a gown like this, I'll never look old. I wonder how old you'd look without me. Campbell's our guest. Thanks. Certainly glad it's a warm night. Yeah. Um, uh, slip up the back way and get you a robe. Mm. One club. Uh, next time you come down to the country, you must bring the children. They'd enjoy the lake. Mm. One spade. By the way, where did you leave them? At the hotel. Mm. At the hotel. Mm. One no trump. I pass. What happened to your boss? Oh, he went to a fire. <laughs> you have many fires in the United States? Oh, there's no need for you to worry about a fire at your hotel. The most modern and largest in the United States. A city in itself. Probably has a greater population than your own hometown. 3,500 to be exact. 3,500 accounted for. Accounted for? Oh, yes. Well, once in a while, a guest or two gets lost. A friend of mine was lost there last year for eight days. When they finally found him, he was weak from hunger. From hunger? Papa, Silvio, he always gets lost. Papa, I want to go home. But you're staying for the weekend. No. Of course, if you are worried about the children. Oh, but you must have a reliable nurse you brought with you from South America. For no Trump. No, we hired one here. Oh, one nurse for eight children? What floor are you on? 27. Oh, my. Well, we can get to the garage through the conservatory. Now, Mrs. Diestro, you mustn't allow your imagination to run away with you. You are going to have your baby soon. Wait. You'll see how you'll feel. Huh? I'm gonna what? Your husband told us. Oh. 
Congratulations. Oh. Here, slip this on. She was just going for a dip in the lake. Shame. And I about to become a mother. What? It's amazing how neither time nor tide changes you. Well, how was I to know the firm actually bought that gown for as a bonus? Next time I'll have our certified accountant send you a statement. Don't move. Stay right where you are. What's the matter, Spider? And look at them. If ever two people belong to each other, there they are. You don't mean us, do you? Now, Harry, this is no time for false pride. Why don't you tell Florence what you told me yesterday? What I told you yesterday? Yeah, yeah. Sure not. Don't be timid. Tell her that you're ashamed of your attitude. That she's the only woman you ever really loved and that if she comes back, you'll open a charge account for her in all the best dress shops. Well, Harry, I never realized you felt like that. Oh, but he does. Go on, Harry, go ahead. Cut out the preliminaries. Kiss and make up and uh, stay for the weekend. Harry. Oh, darling, I know how very, very deeply Florence and Harry's separation has affected you. But don't you really think this is one of those things people should decide all by themselves? But I didn't say anything. Well, Harry suggested the whole thing. Oh, mm. And I know he'd like to stay. Wouldn't you, Harry? Come on now. Come on, Anne. I'll take you upstairs and show you where your room is. Oh, this reunion has made me very happy. It shows you have character. Hello, sweetie. Come on. Good night. Good night, Anne. Harry, hmm? I'm so glad you two have made up. And you can stay made up if you just learn not to say things in the heat of anger. Florence has already promised not to call you any more names. Has she been calling me names? Well, at the club, she was a little disturbed. Good night, Harry. At the club? In front of people? Oh, no, 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 no not just people. A few intimate friends. It was something awfully silly she said anyway. I think it was um, a chowder head. What? Anne? Yes, dear. May I borrow one of your nightgowns? Certainly. Right there in the second drawer. Help yourself. You've got a gall calling me chowder head in front of strangers. Were you talking to me? When are you going to learn to shut that flannel mouth of yours? Take back that flannel mouth crack or I'll... I, I take it back. When are you going to learn to shut that crocodile mouth of yours? Just one more crack about the size of my mouth and I'll leave this house. Well, big mouth, that's just what I wanted to make sure of. It's been very lovely, very lovely. Good night, Ruthie. I'm sorry, I'd love to ask you to stay, only you know how it is. Short of rooms and Harry and Florence making up. <laughs> oh, darling. The Bertrands decided not to stay. Well, I have decided to stay. There are a few things you're old enough to know. There's no better time than right now to teach them. One fine morning, you're going to wake up and find out your husband tracked down some companion with less theories and more... Mm. Oh, Ruth, get undressed and go to bed. Well, I know if I were he, I'd... <coughs> Excuse me. Thanks for the dress. I'll return it tomorrow. Oh, I'll have Arno drive you to the station. Oh, no, no, that's not necessary. I have my own car here. Good night. Good night. Going out, sir? Yes, I'm going down to the lake for a swim. At this time of night, sir? Have you got anything better to suggest? No, sir. All right. Wait for me, Toys. I'll go swimming with you. I've got something to say to you. All right, hurry up. Good night, Arnold. Good night, Miss Campbell. And I'm your sister, and I'm going to tell you something, whether you like it or not. I've been married and divorced because I was a fool. Because you had no plan. It's not a plan, it's a plot. Now, you listen to me. Marriage is based on a woman's ability to hold her man. Oh, Pooh. It's a woman's job, and you've got to work at it. Otherwise, you'll find out there are plenty of competitors. Pooh, Pooh. And go to bed. And Tice is an ordinary He's man. He's not ordinary. Or... Tice can see how important it is for my plan to succeed. He's... He's a trailblazer. 
Said so himself. Sure, and you blaze a trail right to some of the squaw's tent. <laughs> and you seem sane enough as a child. What's happened to you? What sort of lightning struck you? Now, Miss Hooper and I have figured this whole thing oh, out statistically. Oh, Hooper. And I... So that's it. Now, don't say, oh, Hooper, that way. New ideas have been ridiculed before, you know. Women are voting now. But the first woman who ever mentioned it had rotten eggs thrown at her. That's fair enough. Let's throw rotten eggs at Miss Hooper. <laughs> Judging by what happened at your house tonight... Nothing happened in my house tonight. That was my impression, too. You know, I don't know why women always cry at weddings. It's much tougher on men. Look here. Any interest I have in your marital anagram is purely selfish. I'm a very mercenary person. You see, I have a share of Mr. Bertram's share of your deal. And if you don't straighten out your family affairs and get down to business, I won't eat. And, brother, you don't know how I love to eat. Well, you're a woman. What's your advice? Well, let me give you a little of the wisdom picked up by spying on my female friends in the beauty parlors of the nation. Play hard to get. Don't be home for dinner. Work nights in town and stay at your club. The city itself owns the water rights. And last year... Hey, what's that? Must be the Mackenzies. They live a couple of doors down the road from us. Look, there's some bushes. They're stuck behind them. What for? I haven't done anything to hide about. Why should I hide? Because if another wife tears this gown off of me, it will really be embarrassing. Come on, let's go. What was that? It looked like a man and woman. I wonder which of our neighbors have a fondness for midnight bathing. <laughs> we'll soon know. That was a patch of poison oak they went into. <laughs> you know, that hard to get idea of yours is all right. <laughs> Listen, I'm going at the club. Will you drive me in? Today, you are a man. <laughs> well, goodbye. After a night in this household, I'm going to see if I can't find my own husband and have a good, healthy fight and make up. Goodbye, darling. Come again. What for? To watch you sleep? I think your mate's already flown the coop. Poor Ruth's husband. His bed hasn't been slept in. I, I wonder where he can be. Where could he be? Well, that's easy. Just make believe you're a man who's married to a woman with a plan. Now, where would you be? Mm -hmm, that's where he is. I don't believe it. According to the last census, there are three women to each man. Toes out, we better protect ourselves in the clinches. Look, Anne, have I ever advised you wrongly? No. Well, I know marriage is a gamble, but that's what's lovely about it. With a little faith, you've got a big edge. And don't try stacking the cards all your way. It, it takes the fun out of it. I know. That's why I'm going back to my own husband. What do you think I ought to do? Well, I think you ought to forget the new ideas, at least until you prove the old ones inadequate. Well, maybe I could change my plans a little. <laughs> Welcome home, darling. Concentrate on chasing Diestro. I beg your pardon, gentlemen. There's only a million dollars involved. Call for you, sir. Thanks. Hello. Hello, oh, darling. Um, listen, Ann, I uh, have to stay in town tonight to have dinner with Harry. But, darling. I was planning on dinner here, just for the two of us, alone. Well, I'm sorry, but this is business. 
Yeah, we have to go over some estimates together, and I... But, dear, please have dinner here. It's important, very important. I, uh, I want to talk over your income tax. My income tax? Well, uh, a man's allowed an additional $1,200 for a wife, isn't he? Yes. And uh, if he claims he has a wife and really hasn't one, that's fraud, isn't it? Yes. And they put him in jail for that? Yes. Well, I don't want you to go to jail. You don't want me to... Wow! Yes, have we champagne in the house? No, madam. Buy some. A few quarts, madam? A few magnums. And see that it's chilled by tonight. Yes, madam. Oh, and Anna, bring my car. Uh, if anyone calls, I'm not at home. I'm going to the beauty shop. I'll be there for hours and hours. Yes, madam. Hey, you know, I always say, I always say, and darling, if Mr. Bell had to invent something, why couldn't it have been a cigar lighter? They never work. Hello? Oh, hello, Senor Diestro. No, no, you didn't disturb us at all. Oh, no, not, not at all. Hmm? Oh, the appraisals. Well, they run 11 and 4 fifths percent. That's right. No, no, anytime. It's all right. Goodbye. I told Anna to leave our supper in the icebox. We can have it when we want it. I'm not hungry. Neither am I. One sip of this and I don't remember a thing. I don't believe it. It's true. Ties. Oh, what are you doing? That was a fraud. This is the real one. I had to test it. Catches the breeze from the lake. I noticed that. Wait a minute. Isn't this customary? Well, uh, it's old fashioned, but statistics show it's nice. And have I mentioned that it's very nice being married to you? Shh. Don't make a sound. Maybe they'll go away. But darling, it may be important. You better run. 
put me down. I promise not to go away. I promise. Hello. Hello, Tice. Yeah, this is Charlotte Campbell. Oh, hello. How goes it with you? Oh, fine, fine. The things are going along very well with me. Have you got it yet? No, no not yet. Well, you will. My doctor says you're a cinch. Your doc? Huh? What do you mean? Well, have you been scratching lately? No. Uh, why no? Why? What? Tice, what is it? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, thanks for the tip. Uh, darling, oh, what's the matter? Oh, it was just Harry. He, uh, tipped me off that I was going to get... Uh, as a matter of fact, I've had some indication of it myself. Of what? Get what, Tice? The money for the mine. Oh. Oh, that's right. Harry called earlier today. Said something about the forms wouldn't be ready until later in the week. <laughs> it seems Charlotte Campbell has poison oak. Where on earth would she get that? She was here last night to dinner. Unless she's been oh, on darling, a vacation it's, out in the woods. And... It's Charlotte's poison oak. I don't think we ought to intrude. I'm sure if it was our poison oak, she wouldn't intrude. <laughs> that's right. Let's forget all about Miss Campbell, shall we? Uh, uh, darling, hmm? let's have some more wine. Hmm? Yeah. I've been thinking about? What, dear? About that plan of yours. Oh, I've forgotten all about it. Oh, but you shouldn't. Well, I mean, maybe there's some merit to it. Tice. Oh, after all, we've never really given it a fair trial. I think we have. You know, uh, statistics show that... Statistics, darling, I know I've been a fool, but please don't punish me for it. You're right, Tice. Marriage is a gamble, a beautiful gamble. Let's dance, huh? Oh, Tice, you're wonderful. <laughs> I took lessons on the way home. I picked that up in Curacao. I say, Anne, when I was in Panama City, I picked up a new wrinkle. Looked like this. Darling. Oh, wait a minute. It's easy, just like this. Oh, later, dear. Darling, do you remember when I made believe I lost my way? And, uh... See, you know, I'm hungry. What's Arno got laid out? Cold chicken. Co Why didn't you say so? Gee, there's nothing like cold chicken on a night like this. But you, you just said you weren't hungry. Well, I suddenly got hungry. Huh? I'm like that. I'm not hungry one minute and starving to death the next. Comes over me like that. I'll be back in a minute. Four eight two. I think the line's out of order. Will you ring it, please? But we checked. But we checked it last night, sir, and it seemed all right then. Say, listen, I pay my bills on time, don't I? I keep up my end of the bargain. I expect you to keep up yours. So if I want to check, I'm going to check. So check. If you'll hang up, sir, I'll ring. Oh, dear, I'll get it. Yes? Yes, this is Tice Collins speaking. Yeah. What? Cheyenne calling. Yes, yeah, sure, I'll talk to them. Who is it? Cheyenne calling. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hello? Yes, this is Collins speaking. What? Right away? You want me to come to Cheyenne right away? Hang up. Wait, wait a minute, honey. It may be important. What? 
Oh, 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 Shorty. He's very bad, huh? Oh, Shorty. He's no friend of mine. Well, you tell him to keep his chin up. Yeah, I'll take the next plane out of here. Oh, no, darling, you can't. Well, darling, it, it's Shorty, McGum. He's an old friend of mine. I don't care. But he, he, he's sick in bed. They're, they're trying to take his mind away from him. You uh, can't, darling. Well, I, I hate to go, but what, what can I do? I'll send you a wire from Cheyenne every day. Goodbye, dear. I don't get it. Do you? You sure she's been getting those telegrams every day? Yes. I'll have your friend from Cheyenne send them twice a day now. I just got up another batch. Read them. Darling, busily engaged in scratching below the surface of the earth. Scratching? Change that word to digging, you fool. Well, thanks for missing those last three telegraph poles. Good night. Can't say good night without a nightcap. You've already reached the saturation point. Again, good night. You know, it isn't the drink I'm interested in. It's you. Oh, I'm flattered by your choice. Sorry, I've decided not to fight myself any longer. I'm going to forget convention. Forget your husband. He's already forgotten you. Gone two weeks. I never leave you alone two weeks, not two minutes, <laughs> seconds. The next time I help entertain a board of directors, I'll take the train home. Now, don't interrupt. It's my destiny, and I refuse to deny it. We'll go away together at once, now. What would Madame prefer done with him? I know what I'd prefer. But put him in Mr. Collins's room. He's in no condition to drive. Yes, madam. Continue to apply this twice a day, and take sun baths if you can. And please, do not scratch, no matter how tempted. Simply apply this lotion. You are now completely recovered, but I take no chances. The skin over the spots is still very tender. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. Do, 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 Are you getting married? Yep. I thought you already were married. Certainly. Give me I wasn't expecting you. Out there on the lone prairie, they calls me Loco Cheyenne Tice. <laughs> on account of nobody knows where, I'm going to turn up next. Least of all, my women folk. <laughs> you fool. Oh, darling. Darling fool. I'll bet you were the handsomest cowboy out there. I'll take half of that bet, sister. Why didn't you let me know you were coming? Why? Don't you like surprises? You better get used to them if you're going to stay married to me. Oh, Anne, I've been an idiot, a lunkhead, a dope. That doesn't sound like you. Imagine, after you abandon that diabolic idea, I have to get a brain fever and see merit in it. It must have been the heat. Loco Cheyenne oh, well, listen, Anne. From now on, let's be jealous. Hot-tempered, suspicious, irascible, but human. In other words, let's just be an average couple and yeah. live like one. I still think it was a good idea. Why? Oh, for someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, tell me all about your trip. Uh, did your friend get better? Could you do something for I'll him? I'll tell you later on we have more leisure. I want to get a toothbrush and get into something more Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, Let me get them for you. You sit down. You look tired. No, no, I can get it. From now on, I'm going to wait on you. Jimmy! Oh, Arnold. Mr. Collins is home. Get Mr. Daniels out of that room quickly and quietly. Yes, ma'am. What's the matter, darling? Oh, nothing. I was just telling Arnold what we'd have for breakfast. Yes, sir. Hippert Caring, uh, Kipper Taring, and strawberries, and... Hello, sir. Hello, Arnold. Oh, where are you going, dear? My room. Oh, no. You're not going to leave me. Not after two weeks of being alone. I'm not going to let you out of my sight. Come on in my room and talk to me now. I want to hear all about Cheyenne and the mine and your friend Shorty. Bring Mr. Collins a toothbrush, Arnold. Yes, ma'am. What's this? What's the call? It's so. People next door, they're uh, having a party. In our house?
Gordon got sick. So he put on my pajamas. What a sucker I am. I go out of town and you not only put him in my bedroom, you put him in my pajamas. Well, if you'll stop being the irate husband for just a few seconds, I'll explain everything. Don't bother. I gave up believing those stories when I first saw my father dressed up as Santa Claus. My pajamas. Here's your hat. Well, so what? You think New York's the only place that's got a Fifth Avenue? Huh. Fifth Avenue's all over the world, especially in Cheyenne. And your coat. Poison Oak. Ply Freely. 65th Street Hospital. Sure, it's for my friend. That's what he was sick with. I had to bring him to New York because the hospitals are better. I suppose you're wearing his spots out of friendship, too. They're birthmarks. Whose birthmarks? Charlotte Campbell's? Yes, Charlotte Campbell. Harry told me she had poison oak. Well, I suppose you had adjoining rooms in the hospital. That must have been cozy. You could even scratch each other. You're a great one to be giving me the third degree with your boyfriend running around the house in my pajamas. <laughs> Too bad you couldn't keep me in there. It's gone on for months. But if your angelic soul is so offended, why don't you go? Don't worry. I'm going so far away from you, it won't be... Oh, Anne, Harry and I are back together again. We're going on Hello. our second honeymoon. In my pajamas. <laughs> and I was treating you for the mange. Send a telegram. Send a telegram. Send a telegram. Send a telegram. There she is. Anne, what have you done to Tice? What has he done to me? Do you know what Tice is going to do? Sure, go for a midnight swim the minute I'm gone. Mrs. Collins, our poison oak was acquired platonically. We went for a swim and... Swim in water, not in bushes. Has everybody gone crazy? Not I only get that, the you go to the hospital and get a joining that room. That was a coincidence. So you did have a joining room. Will somebody please listen to I'm me? No. Flight number three on board, please. Well, you can catch me in Reno, but please don't try. Tight is going to sell the mine for peanuts. He's throwing away everything he's worked and hoped he's for. He's selling five years of his life. He's lived too long now. He's temporarily unbalanced. Then put him in a straitjacket. Cheyenne, sick friend, Fifth Avenue happy. If you let him down now, you'll regret it all your life. He'll blame it on you. It'll be on your conscience. It'll be terrible. You won't be able to sleep or eat. It'll haunt you to the dying day. Well, I'd rather have a ghost around the house than Tice Collins. Well, if you leave now, I'm going to get poison oak with him again. But this time, it won't be for a business deal. Tice isn't the kind of a man to live alone. He's not the bachelor Mrs. type, Tice and you're Collins. leaving, and... Mrs. Tice Collins, on board, please. Tell him to stop banding my name around the airport. And I'm not answering it. My working day is over. Oh, but darling, you... No, I'll make you promise. You come back to me, and I stay home nights. <laughs> Oh, I'm over all that foolishness. You've got a family to support. Here, attend to business. All right. Hello. Oh, hello, Anne. It's your sister. Tom, I want you to do something for me. Tice is selling the mine for penis to a bunch of pirates. He must be stopped. Well, what can I do? Tice is of age. He can sell his mine for lychee nuts, and I couldn't do anything. You still take care of the wacky, don't you? Well, this is your kind of a job. Tice is crazy. You've got to get him out of there, even if you have to put him in a straitjacket. What is it? Well, all right. What's the address? What is it, dear? 33 Wall Street. Here, let me talk to her. Wait a minute. Hello, Anne. Where are you? Airport? You're going to Reno? Oh, well, now, Anne, Anne, wait a minute. You, you mustn't do anything until I've talked to you. Sorry, darling. I just missed the 4 o'clock plane, but nothing is going to stop me from making the 7 o'clock plane. Mr. Collins, I assure you that when we take possession, we will do everything in our power to make the Linda Vista an enterprise you yourself would be proud of. I must admit that when you first approached us, we were skeptical. After all, we don't know you. But however, here's the check. Payment in full. 
Uh, just sign here, if you please. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you are, Mr. Tungsten. We've been looking all over for you. You shouldn't hide from us, Mr. Tungsten. You can come home now. We've got a surprise for you. We put a copper mine under your bed. What is all this anyway? Now you can dig 24 hours a day. And we're going to give you a fancy drill. One that goes put, 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 put. See, are these two guys crazy? And where do you see what's in the closet? A peanut brittle mine. Why, you could turn around and sell it tomorrow at a tremendous profit. Probably to these gentlemen. What are you doing? Uh, Mr. Collins, I mean Mr. Tungsten. You I don't believe that... it. Listen, I don't know who sent you here. Probably somebody with a misplaced sense of humor, but... Is that any way to talk about Dr. Everready? And after he bought you that minus cap with the light on it. Just one step closer and I'm going to clip both of you. Surprise! Sign here, please. Now, will you please get me out of this thing? Huh? Yeah. Whoa. Oh, I've been reading Esquire, huh? Now, listen, get me out of this thing. Well, tell me first who put you in it. Where's Ann? I don't know, and I don't care. Unbuckle me. Well, I, uh, I just dropped around to uh, apologize for last night. Apologize? A lot of good that'll do. Well, if you're going to take that attitude, maybe I better not unbuckle you. Besides, maybe your doctor wouldn't want me to. Oh, go ahead. Don't worry, I won't touch it. Honest? Honest. Here we go. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. You, you said honest. You're a great one to talk about honesty. Now, what happened last night? I want the truth. Truth? Well, I... Come don't... on, don't stall. What happened last night? I'm trying to tell you. You can't hang a man for getting drunk and passing out, can you? You can't. You mean you... You really passed out? Of course. Of course. <laughs> I knew nothing happened. One look at you and I'd know she'd prefer me to you. Of course. Why, of course. I've got broader shoulders. I've got more hair. And your eyes are pretty. <laughs> That's silly. I'm a beast. I've got to find Ann. Now, just one thing. You sure you passed out cold? Yes. Where's Mrs. Collins? At the airport, sir. Her plane leaves at 7 o'clock. Plane? Yes, sir. She's flying to Reno. California sleeper leaving immediately. All passengers aboard.
Yeah, what is it, Harry? Yes, I heard about it. But frankly, Harry, 